Hello and welcome to another lecture of the Law of the Sea. I am Muhammad Tahmidul Islam, lecturer, Department of Law, World University of Bangladesh. And today we are going to talk about exclusive economic zone and the continental shelf. So first, let's go to exclusive economic zone or EEZ. The EEZ is an area beyond the and adjacent to a coastal state's territorial sea to a limit of 200 nautical miles from the baseline. Within this zone, the coastal state may exercise sovereign rights over exploration, exploitation, conservation and management of natural resources and other economic activities such as the production of wind or tidal power. All states, whether coastal or landlocked, enjoy the right of navigation and overflight and the laying of submarine cables and pipeline within the EEZ. The coastal state alone, however, has the right to construct and operate artificial islands and other structural installations with accompanying 500 meter safety zones. Within the EEZ, the coastal state is primarily responsible for the conservation of living resources. The coastal state has the right to regulate both marine scientific research and pollution in the EEZ. It also has legislative and enforcement competence within its EEZ to deal with the dumping of waste from vessels and pollution from seabed activity. So here we are seeing uh, a picture of the exclusive economic zone of Bangladesh. So we are seeing that the red part is the territorial sea, which is the 12 nautical mile zone. And beyond that goes the contiguous zone, which actually includes that the territorial sea and which goes 24 nautical miles from the baseline. And then beyond that, from the baseline to 200 nautical mile, we are seeing that this is the exclusive economic zone. So in this zone, Bangladesh can use its power or its knowledge to extract natural resources from this region. A state's exclusive economic zone starts at the seaward edge of its territorial sea and extends outwards to a distance of 200 nautical mile or 370 kilometer from the baseline. The difference between the territorial sea and the exclusive economic zone is that the first confers full sovereignty over the waters, whereas the second is merely a sovereign right which refers to the coastal state's rights below the surface of the sea. The surface waters, as can be seen in the map, are international waters. So if we go back to the picture, we are seeing that the exclusive economic zone, the water, is actually part of the international sea, and this water can be used by any country. But what matters most in this zone is actually the natural resources that are found under the water which is oil, gas, and other types of natural resources. So now let's talk about continental shelf. So continental shelf generally begins after the exclusive economic zone. A continental shelf is a portion of a continent, continent that is submerged under an area of relatively shallow water known as a shelf sea. A continental shelf typically extends from the coast of depths of 100 to 200 meters which is 330 to 660 feet. So it's a long way down if we want to see a continental shelf. Under the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, the name continental shelf was given a legal definition as the stretch of the seabed adjacent to the shores of a particular country to which it belongs. The average width of continental shelves is about 80 kilometer or 50 miles. The depth of the shelf also varies but is generally limited to water shallower than 100 meter or 330 feet. So in this picture, we are seeing uh, the actual picture. Well, it's not really actual. It's an artistic rendition of continental shelf. So if we begin from the left side of the photo or the picture, we will see that this is the coastal plain or this is the landmass. We live in this area. And then the river water goes to the sea and the sea begins. So this part is called the continental shelf and then begins the continental slope. And in after that, there are submarine canyons, continental rise, abyssal plain and all those areas which are all rich in different types of natural resources. So continental shelf is also very rich 
in natural resource like oil and gas and so therefore these uh, submerged regions are also important to understand for uh, for international lawyers to work with the law of the sea so i hope you have understood the lecture content of exclusive economic zone which begins uh, from uh, from the actually from the baseline to 200 nautical miles for every country in the sea area and also the continental shelf area which is very rich in different types of natural resources so here the green part is called the continental shelf so thank you all for participating in today's class and i hope to see you all in the next class thank you